What's up, YouTube friends and subscribers? Retro Gamer here, bringing you another real quick narration. Um, I know that I talk about Nintendo a lot on my channel, a lot more than I mean to. Um, I've already defended this before about why they're right up my alley and I like them, and they just, you know, I've always said they make a game system first instead of making an entertainment system first because I mean let's face it we all saw what happened with the Xbox One when they tried to focus more on entertainment and not about games anyways I wanted to go ahead and defend the Wii U a little bit as well as sort of uh, explain why I think it's the best console that's out on the market at this time I know that I'm probably gonna receive a little bit of slack about this uh, but it's just my personal opinion of course um, I don't own a PS4 at this time uh, or even an Xbox One, so I can't really fairly judge it, but I'm judging it based upon what I'm seeing offered through these systems. I'm not basing it upon graphics because graphics don't mean anything, and I'll explain this a little bit later in this discussion. And of course, as always, because it's my opinion, you're welcome to share yours in the comment, and let's get a healthy discussion going about not only this topic, but topics in general and let's try to keep it clean please let's not try to get vulgar or um, you know throw slurs out there and let's just keep it generally nice and clean but um, having owned a PS3 and a PS2 and a PS1 and having owned a, you know a Wii and a GameCube and a 64 and having owned the Xbox 360 and Xbox original I don't really see much of a difference between the PS4 and the Xbox One, honestly. I mean, the Kinect was the deciding factor for Xbox One because at least then you had a means to control it beyond the controller. If I wanted to play games, I would grab the controller. If I want to use it for Netflix, I'm going to want to use the voice commands. So obviously Kinect to me is the deciding factor with the Xbox One. But, you see, to me, graphical capabilities has never been the deciding factor. It always needs to be about games. I mean, look at Mario Kart 8 for an example. It's not exactly the pillar of the example of the kind of capabilities of what a system can do. I mean, Mario Kart Wii certainly was not one of the best games on the Wii, but it certainly helped sell it. You know? And as we've already seen from systems like the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4, they're already starting to reach their graphical limits. They're already starting to reach their capabilities to where developers are doing just lazy ports of the games over to PCs because they don't want to bother trying to make it to 1080. They just want to keep it at the 900p that was on the Xbox One version. You know? Um, so, and in a few years, Honestly, with 4K TVs and stuff like that, 1080p isn't really going to matter. It's not really going to be relevant. And these systems are not going to be able to keep up with what computers and what tablets are going to be capable of doing. And so that's why, to me, gaming is the most important thing going right now because of the fact that it needs to focus more on what it can offer outside of graphics. And that's why, to me, the Wii U is the better system. I mean, you certainly don't get the graphics, but if you work within the confines of the system, you can get some truly good games. Not to mention the fact that with games like Unt Epic and um, all that that have come to the system already, it's proven to be a really good platform for any developers to really experiment with it. The off-TV play, I've already said time and time again, really makes the system shine. I mean, if someone wants to watch television, that's fine. Put it on the PlayStation 3 and, you know, go ahead and watch Netflix. Go ahead and, you know, do something. I'll be on my Wii U gamepad playing Mario Kart 8 off screen. I could still play it. And we don't have to worry about having, you know, a fight over the television. It makes it so much easier. That's just me. Second, I know people want to drop the gamepad, and I can understand that there are patches that would work around that. And that's an option that if Nintendo chooses to do, I'll be behind. But I personally don't agree with it. Again, because of the off-TV play. If you remove the gamepad and you take away the experience that games like Nintendo Land and Zombie U offer, 
where you have to essentially play these games. Like imagine trying to play a multiplayer game of Nintendo Land without the gamepad. I mean, you're trying to control the ship and in Metroid Blast and you're now having to now split the screen up between three other people. You know? Or imagine having to try to play Zombie U without the gamepad and not being able to scan items. I think that it could be done. It just wouldn't make it as interesting as it is with the gamepad. That's just my personal opinion. If Nintendo wants to drop it, that's their choice. I just I see it for the value that what it is. I mean, think about what PlayStation 4 offers you and what Xbox One offers you and then think about what you have to buy separate. You have to buy a microphone separate if you want to chat online. You have to buy the camera, the Kinect, the PlayStation I. You have to buy it separate. You have to buy that separate. With the Wii U gamepad, it's built in. It's already there. Not to mention NFC technology is already built into the gamepad. So trying to play something like Smash Brothers without those figurines would be very difficult. Or it would be essentially pointless to even release those amiibo uh, figurines w without a gamepad. I've already gone into that discussion though about why I think Nintendo should not drop the gamepad. I'm just saying that the gamepad, because of the fact it offers in a built-in camera, it has a sensor bar built into it. So that way you can do things like Wii Sports Club and you can um, use NFC technology and you can talk right from the gamepad. You don't have to go off and buy a separate microphone to be able to use it. To me, that that's the value of it right there. And then there's people that talk about they should have made a more powerful system. That's not really ever been Nintendo's thing. I mean, even with the NES, it was te technologically inferior to a lot of the stuff that was out at the time. Not to mention that when the Super Nintendo came out, it was two years after most of its competitors had already hit the market. So they had plenty of time to work with the 16-bit technology that was the Super Nintendo. And two years in 16-bit technology is a lot of time. No wonder it, it was, you know, technologically advanced. But if it had come out at the same time as the Genesis, it probably wouldn't have. And also, if you look at other systems like the Nintendo 64 and the Wii, and even the GameCube to an extent, again, the GameCube was another one that came out about a year and a half after its competitors. They're, they are really not up to par with what the standards are. I mean, the PlayStation 2 was the best system out at that time. I, I love the GameCube. I still think it's the best system of that generation. But if you look at the PlayStation 2, the fact that it played PS1 games, it played PS2 games, and it played DVDs and CDs, all of which were the rage at that time. I mean, people had CDs, people had DVDs, so... You could also then keep your PlayStation 1 library and just buy one system and do all of this on it, of course. But with the GameCube, you couldn't do that. But now we're in a generation that has gone down the line and now backwards compatibility has been lost to everyone but Nintendo. And this is another reason why the Wii U is better than its competitors, at least in my opinion. With the Wii, you get the ability to play, I mean, I'm sorry, with the Wii, yes, you had the ability to play GameCube games and Wii games. With the Wii U, the GameCube functionality is lost at this time. But I wouldn't be surprised if they eventually came out with a virtual console for the GameCube. So, now you have Wii U games, and you have Wii games, all of which are capable to be played on one system that, that you're able to voice chat on and use um, um, camera functionality. And you were able to use the same controllers, you know, the Wii remotes and the nunchucks and the classic controllers, plus the Wii U itself has a gamepad and its own classic controller. You can still use the same balance board. Everything comes over from the old generation that your Xbox One does not do. It doesn't use the same Kinect. It doesn't play 360 games. 
The PlayStation 4, they've already announced that they are not doing that. They're going to use PlayStation Now to bring their PlayStation 3 games over. They're, it's not backwards compatible with physical media. So again, all these reasons make the Wii U an superior. It may not be the superior technology that the PlayStation 4 is, but neither is the Xbox One, really. But the, that, hasn't, that hasn't stopped it from selling. Now, all these systems have their own good points, you know? I like what the Xbox One is offering with its Kinect. I like what PlayStation 4 is offering. But I'm just saying that for the most bang for my buck, it looks like, hey, here's $300, $200 cheaper than the competition. I still get to play my Wii games. I get the, the, the brand new Nintendo first party exclusives. I get, if developers would get off their ass and quit being lazy and actually learn to code for the Wii U they could get the the awesome third party exclusives and every now and then they get you know third party exclusives I mean look at um what was it that just recently came out now I mean I know that they had um they had like a Call of Duty that came out and I think that they had uh, some other third party stuff that came out if developers would learn to code for it they could get the third party exclusives um but the matter of the fact is, is that to me, it's just it gives me the best. I'm able to watch Netflix. I'm able to watch Hulu. I'm able to do it all off screen or on screen if I want to. I'm able to get, you know, if they decide to do it, I'm able to get DS, um, virtual console stuff in there. You know, I mean, they have Game Boy stuff in there. I'm, I'm just saying, it's it's an all it's your all in one system that you don't have to pay extra for like PlayStation Now. So think about that. Plus, I mean, if Nintendo did come out with more powerful hardware, they would be just like Sega. Sega was screwed from the from the word go. I love the Dreamcast. I think it's one of the greatest systems to ever come out. But they screwed themselves from the word go with the Dreamcast because people lost faith in the brand from the fact of within what I think a 10 year time frame you had the Genesis, the Sega CD, the 32X, the CDX and um, the Saturn yeah there was like a system coming out every couple of years I mean it was ridiculous imagine if Nintendo did that imagine if Microsoft did that if you had bought an Xbox One and then come to find out two years later they decided eh, well we can't keep up with the technology anymore you know PC gaming has advanced way further than what we expected. Here's a brand new console. Here's the Xbox Two. Yeah, I know you just bought your Xbox One last year, but not buy the Xbox Two. Would you really go out and plop down another five hundred dollars if that's what it even costs? Would you go out and buy that, or would you think, well, in another year or two, you're just going to come out with another system? I'm not going to buy that. That's the reason why Nintendo is going to stick with the Wii U, and I'm proud that they're going to do that. And plus, if I can also bring up a point, the systems are already outdated. I mean, we already know that the Wii U is technically outdated technology compared to the PlayStation 4. But you also have to think about something that Nintendo usually has never come out first. They usually have come out last. The Super Nintendo came out two years after the Genesis. The GameCube I've already stated, I think, came out like a year, a year and a half after the Dreamcast and the PlayStation 2. So, I mean, they had time to work with that technology. The Wii came out after the PlayStation 3 and 360 were already out. They already had time to work with that technology to know where they wanted to go with it. The Wii U came out first. It was the first Nintendo system to launch first that I know of. And they didn't know the technology yet. And, you, and you're kind of seeing it now, where they're now starting to come out with you know, 1080p games. but. For a while, they couldn't do that. They, 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 they didn't know how to work with it. They needed the time. And that's what I'm getting at. It would have been a good time to have launched the Wii U now, because now you've had an opportunity for the other two to come out. You've had an opportunity for a good year or so to work with that technology and have released it now. But also something you have to consider, the fact that the Wii U came out first, probably a good year to year and a half before its competition, they didn't know. I mean, I remember reading a lot of articles, and I remember even thinking about this and talking about this with my friends. No one that I knew of 
thought that there was going to be a huge generational leap in technology. They thought it was going to be pretty similar to the PS3, maybe a little bit more powerful. So when Nintendo guessed, and they ran, I'm sure that they ran the R&D and all this stuff, they probably thought, okay, Sony and Microsoft are probably just going to make 362 and PlayStation 4. They're probably not going to make it too much more powerful. So if we come up with something that's a little bit more powerful, we'll be right up on par. They didn't know what Sony and Microsoft were going to do because they hadn't released that information. And they weren't going to release it for well over, a, for close to a year. So Nintendo did the best job that they did with the information that they had, I think. And really, I've, I've, I'll, I'll state this in another video. But to me, it, all, it always comes down to the developers. It has nothing to do with the hardware. I mean, look at the Wii. The Wii had some good games. Look at games like Other M. Metroid Other M looked beautiful. It looked really good. Skyward Sword, gorgeous. And it's because the, the developers of those games took the time to work within the technology. If you don't believe me, go online and look up uh, Ironfall for the 3DS. Looks really good. It's a it's a Gears of War third person shooter kind of clone, but it looks really good for the 3DS. And that's a developer of three people, three people developing it, and they have it looking good. You mean to tell me that a big corporation like Capcom or Ubisoft that you can't do that? You can't make a game look that good on the 3DS or on the Wii U? I'm sorry, I think that that's bogus. That's laziness, that's an excuse. You're just trying to be as lazy as possible because you just want to copy and paste and you don't want to do any extra work writing a few extra lines of code. That's what it comes down to. And that's a rant for another time that I'm not going to get into right now because I could go on a huge tangent about that alone. And I know that it comes down to preference. I'm sure that the PlayStation 4 is a really great system. I'm looking forward to owning one. The Vita, I'm sure, is a really great system. But as time has proven time and time again, the Game Boy was the least powerful of its predecessors, of its competition. And it sold really well because it didn't drain your batteries. The DS was not nearly as powerful as the PlayStation Portable, but yet the DS sold like crazy and because it has games on it. It had game, games, and games, and games, and games, and games, and games. And it was affordable. So as long as Nintendo continues to make affordable systems that work for the consumer, I think they're going to do well. And this is the trend that always, is always going to happen. Even if we do have another console generation, I can guarantee you that Nintendo's will more likely be the, the inferior one. At least from a technological standpoint, compared to whatever competitors are out at the time. And it's because of the fact is they would rather create affordable technology that's a few years older that they know how to work with and that they can develop for just in case developers decide to do like they did with the 3DS and back out and do like they did with the Wii U where they promised they were going to develop games for it and they didn't and they had to be stuck with their first party stuff they need to be able to know how to work with it and make it look as good as they possibly can and make it work within the confines of what they want it to do and at the end of the day I would rather have a nice comfortable controller like the Wii remote or something that feels light and comfortable in my hands like the Wii U gamepad and actually feel like I'm getting a unique and new experience out of a game rather than oh hey here's Uncharted 4 it looks the exact same as Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 and it plays the exact same as Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 and it has the similar trophies as Uncharted 1 and Uncharted 2 and Uncharted 3 but you're gonna plop down 60 bucks for this right? No. You haven't offered me anything new. I'm sorry. Uncharted 4 looks good. And it would be like if you offered me another God of War or an Assassin's Creed. Yeah, I'll buy it because I like the series. But I know exactly what I'm going to get into. I'm not going to get any new experiences. But at least on the Wii U, I know you have a gamepad. You're going to offer me something new. You're going to offer me touch controls. You're going to offer me gyroscope controls. 
you know, you're going to offer me something. You're going to give me something new. And look at the 3DS. No one thought that the touch screen was going to work. But yet, if you play a game like Moon Chronicles, or if you play a game like Metroid uh, Prime Hunters, or even Kid Icarus, games that use that touch screen, it is very accurate, very smooth, and very precise. And I would rather have that kind of a unique control scheme and feel like I'm able to move very quickly between targets like using the Wii Remote and Nunchuck and Sin Punishment than hold a traditional controller like the Classic Controller Pro and feel like it's not moving nearly as quickly as my hand is because it can't react as quickly as my hand can. That's just my two cents of course. And I hope that I kept this relatively civil. I try not to get too worked up when I talk about Nintendo because I feel like they give a lot of hate for people who don't understand because to me at least me being a retro gamer as well as I feel like I'm a true gamer true gamers care about games we don't care about graphics if you care about graphics go play PC that's all there is to it because in three or four years the PlayStation 4 isn't going to be technologically superior anymore there's going to be better technology out there and let's face it the PlayStation even though the 360 used DVD drives and was technologically inferior, it is still being developed for. It is, it is, it is antiquated technology. It is old. It's, it's using DVD technology. That would be like if Sony came out with the PlayStation 4 and said, we're going to use CDs. What? You can't hold a lot of information on that. Or at least on a cartridge, you could hold a lot more information than you could on a CD if you crammed it in right. But that's another discussion for another time, guys. I appreciate you listening, if you've listened this far. Make sure that you share your thoughts on it. What do you think about this current generation? Do you think that graphics even really matter anymore? Because I don't. I would rather get a unique experience out of using a Kinect, or using a Wii Remote, or a balance board, or using a Move Controller, or a gamepad, or a touch screen, or something. I would rather just get a unique experience which is the reason why I'm looking forward to like Project Morpheus being released because I feel like that would give me a unique experience I'd rather have a unique gameplay experience and feel like oh yeah it looks great but it plays the exact same as its last three counterparts so I'm sorry if that offends anybody because again I'm a big time gamer I know you can't see my game room anymore but I have shelves full of games I have probably 30 some odd consoles and it's ever growing. I'm going out there and getting new games and systems all the time. And I'm getting into new stuff all the time. So I don't want to feel like I'm coming off harsh or that I'm hating on Microsoft or Sony. Because again, I have much respect for them. And with the exception of their current generation offerings, I have everything that you've come out with. So I can't really hate on Sony if I have everything with the exception of the PlayStation 4 and the Vita. I can't. I have four out of the six of your systems. I'm just saying. I've probably gone around in a big circle about it and I apologize. Again, thanks for listening, guys. I'm just going to stop it here before I go off on another tangent. I just think that the Wii U, even though it may not be as technologically advanced as something like the PlayStation 4, it offers a unique experience. The gamepad is really the backbone of the system. It's sort of like having the Wii Remote for the Wii, there's no way they could have worked. I don't. I don't see that there's a way they can really work around it that much. It needs to stay, and we need to stop giving Nintendo slack because here's what happens. And this is going to be my last point. Here's what happens: we talk slack about the Wii U. Developers here, we talk slack about the Wii U. They don't develop games for the Wii U, so the Wii U doesn't sell. Because it doesn't sell, we talk slack about it and thus the circle continues if you embrace the technology and you buy it and people see hey this game is selling like hotcakes we have reason to want to buy games we have a reason to want to create games for this system because people are going to buy it guess what happens you get more third party games and you get more first party games and then the system has a robust library 
So just think about that for a minute. Because the PlayStation 3 was in a similar boat. People didn't want to develop for it. It was hard. It, was, it, it didn't have a lot of great third-party titles. But then towards the end, people loved it. You got good first-party games, and you had a lot of third-party things. And now the PlayStation 4 is the system to beat. So I'm just saying, if we support it, people will want to buy for it. Think about the fact that I recently discovered that Ubisoft has a lot of games that they have developed specifically for the Wii U that they haven't released because no one has bought it and they don't think that it's worth their time to release them. Think about that. Just saying. We could have had a Zombie U too. We probably could have who knows what. You know, we probably could have had, you know, some kind of an, an original Nintendo Assassin's Creed. There's no, there's no telling what we could have had from these developers if we support the system. I'm going to support it. I plopped down the money for it. And to me, it was worth it. The $400 that I spent on it, I got way more than what I would spend. I got way more out of it than what I would have if I had bought an, an Xbox One. But that's just my two cents. I don't know what you expect from the Wii U. It's already, I think, like $200 cheaper than its competition. Do you really think it's going to be able to hold a candle to it? I mean, that's like saying, hey, here's a $250 Wii. Why is it not as powerful as the $600 PlayStation 3? I don't know. Maybe because the PS3 is $600 and it has $600 worth of technology in it? Maybe. Just an idea. But again, I know I've just gone around in the big circle again, and I'm going off on another tangent, and I apologize. Thanks for listening, guys. Make sure that you share your opinion, as always, because your opinion is the only one that counts. And I appreciate for you for listening so, for so long. I love all the support that I can get. So um, if you're around, I would love to have you guys come back and uh, subscribe to my channel, because I try to do this stuff at least once a week, if not every other week. And... Um, See you next time.